Hey guys, Sean B, and today I want to share with you guys my Giants B12 team that I just built a couple days ago. What? And you might be asking yourself immediately, what? I thought this is a beginner team at this point. Why are you building this only now? <laughs> hey, the poor chef's not kidding. Didn't you hear? They found a whole warehouse full of them. They're worthless. <laughs> <laughs> Let me explain, okay? I used to be a virgin violent rune fan, but now I am a chat despair enjoyer. I think half the reason for my G3 in the last Arte season was because of Gianna, and the other half was because I was running a lot of despair unit, and it was really strong and fun at the same time. So I need better despair rune, I need better swift rune for my Gianna. I have so many vile runes in the past 7 years already, but my Despair and Swift storage is kind of pathetic. So now I need to farm giants, okay? I'll show you the runes quickly, I'll go through the reason and all that good stuff after this, but here's the Lucian to one-shot wave, here is the Malaya that's really fast, there's a reason for it, here's the Malaya that's really slow, not really, you know, just slower than this guy who is also on a double wheel runes, and this girl who is on double wheel as well. So let's go for a run right here. The perfect run is around 26 seconds. I don't know how it gets faster day by day. I think some animation in between got a little bit faster. And sometimes I get like a 25 second run. But usually the perfect run will be around 26 seconds because it is optimized to win in a certain. Uh, how do I say? When the turn just happened perfectly. Yep, like this. Then the run will be around 26 seconds. But sometimes go down to 25 or 27 seconds. I have no idea why. Like, it just... <laughs> and I also don't know why you are not playing Undead World Hero Survival. Sounds like this video is sponsored by Undead World Hero Survival. If you want to support the channel, there's a link for you to download the game in the video description. It is a free-to-play zombie apocalypse RPG game where you can collect many, many different heroes from six different factions to battle zombie in story mode and also battle other player in PvP. I've been playing the game for a little while and my favorite hero is Tanya. And it's definitely because of her great weapon and skill set. Yes, she's pretty good. Not gonna lie, she's pretty good. She's my frontline tank right now and she's doing an amazing amount of damage. Great melee character. And there are so many other heroes to collect. The character design looks really amazing and they do add new characters and events regularly. So what are you waiting for? Join the game right now. Use my link in the video description. New player get 1000 gem for free. And if you use my promo code UASEANB. You a Sean B. You get an additional 500 gems, so what are you waiting for? So go down there, use the link and support the channel at the same time and join Undead World Hero Survival. I have no idea why, it varies from 25 to 27, but that is the perfect run. And this team rely on first, Lucian using skill 3, which happens maybe half the time. And you need to land your dots, which means it will happen most of the time, no matter how high your accuracy is, the boss and the mid boss can still resist your dots. But usually it should be pretty fast. And the slow run will be around 40 seconds, sometimes a minute because you can miss your dots back to back to back. So the average will be around 40 seconds, which is very similar to like a Tricaru run in Giants, which is already good enough. See, so this is a run where the Lucian didn't use skill 3 and we have to waste the Ignite or whatever skill 3 of the fairy is, the, the pixie, not the fairy. And the run will be slowed down quite a fair bit. And because my order, my Lucian and my order Malai don't have wheel runes, so they might be frozen as well, but it's okay. Yeah, in general, the run is still pretty fast and I'm quite happy with this team. What, what was I using before? Because I still farm the Span Swift occasionally. So I was running some sort of Savannah, Crow, Harsh Vale, you know, basic stuff that will work in Giants, but it wasn't the most optimal. And if you build this team, you can also use the same exact team 
in the other dungeon in steel fortress you can replace lucian with a rogue if you want more consistency but you can run the team in giants and steel fortress and they're gonna do just fine the fastest run in steel fortress i think is 28 second it is usable in other content as well so it's definitely not a waste so what about the turn order i have one very fast malaya this is what they call the high requirement team so i read a reddit post i'll leave the link down below and if you have a melee that's really really fast to move twice before the tattoo move you can ensure that the enemy will have five dots and that will one shot the enemy if the tattoo take a turn so i need one of the melee to move twice to ensure that will happen do you need that for yourself you don't you don't need to have this kind of speed, okay? You can run a slow sheer wheel, Malaya. It's going to be just fine, but the perfect run of your team will not have a 25 second. If you have Lucian to be the first to move and you put Vile Rune on one of the Malaya and they proc to ensure five dots on the boss, I heard the run can be as quick as 21 second, which is really amazing, but that is luck based. If you want your perfect run to be consistent 25 to 27 seconds then i would recommend trying out a very fast malaya so i have two fight set on my team one of them is on tattoo and one of them is on the level 35 malaya my staff is actually on a shield set and this girl is definitely on fight rune so this is the lucian that can one shot wave but you might be wondering as well, hey Sean, my Lucian has more stats. Why am I not one-shotting the wave? Your artifact can make a huge difference. So I have damage on water. I have quick damage when enemy HP condition is good or bad, depending on what you can roll. I think both are great because Lucian multi-hit. So when the second or third card hit the enemy and their HP is already lower because of the first card, then you earn more quick damage with the artifact and also quick damage in the other artifact. So these are not like the most amazing. They are barely one or two rolls, but it should be enough to one shot wave. I should have built this way, way earlier because farming rune is so much faster using this. It's crazy because sometimes you get a couple good perfect run back to back and the run time is really, really fast. I'm burning crystal like crazy, crazy. But sometimes you see like this, Lucian doesn't use the thing and uh, it is really unfortunate. But it is still already really, really fast. Do you need to build a perfect run? I don't think you need to because for most free-to-play player, you are not earning enough crystal if you're farming really fast and you farm a lot, okay? You don't need to like, I need to have a 20 second run for everything. You don't have to, you don't have to. If you have like a busy lifestyle, you need to work a lot, and you only have like an hour or two to farm, then just try to make the fastest run possible. So a lot of people who don't run a super fast Malaya and you might not kill the boss immediately right here, then you might need more shield rune to deal with the boss damage output. And also, I would not recommend skilling up the Malaya, yeah? Because when you max skill these units, they have very good chance to attack by absorb and they can slow down the boss and usually you want the boss to actually take a turn so he died to the dots if the boss doesn't take a turn the revenge attack will kill you if your unit is not six star or they're not very tanky so i actually think it's not very good to max skill your malaya i i max skill this one because i was using it way before for like toa stuff doesn't really matter but the second one not a single skill up and i think it is better this way and your team should have high accuracy so everything i run should have good accuracy except for lucian doesn't need accuracy and sav definitely doesn't need accuracy oh wait sav need accuracy and something extra you can do is skilling up your sav because the chance that he can put dots on the enemy is not exactly amazing it is only 50 percent chance so having some skill up will be helpful to your team to make it more consistent so when you first build a team it might not be really fast because you don't have a malaya that can lap the tattoo and you don't put five dots on the boss and your run time will be a minute plus but don't worry as long as your run is consistent that is more important than 
a fail run and you're doing it a little bit faster, okay? If your team is dying, pay attention to why your team is dying. It is very important because you need to know whether your team is landing the dots or your team is dying to the damage. It is very different. And you need to find out the exact reason why your team is dying. Because in this situation right here, if the Lucian failed to one-shot the wave and the crystals start hitting you, that is where you can notice whether you need more shield runes. See this? Even if I laugh, I still don't put enough dots on the boss. Sometimes I put enough dots to kill the tower, but not the boss. <laughs> <laughs> it is really annoying. And here is where the slow debuff and the attack bar absorption can really destroy your team because you are hitting a boss that is not moving and it might kill your entire team before you can actually take a turn to kill it or before the boss actually take a turn. So it's a bit slower. Why do I run double wheel and not violent on anything? Because double wheel is really good in the mid boss stage. In here, you might not have the perfect condition like the dots and the, the incinerate to happen. Then the golem will start freezing your ass. And because your team is not built with like tanky stats or your team is not really fast, you just build enough speed to move, then the freezing from the mid boss can be quite detrimental. It will destroy you. It will freeze your tattoo, freeze your staff, and then you just slowly die to the golem damage because Lucian alone is not enough to kill the mid boss. That's why double will is recommended on the bill. You don't need amazing will runes, okay? You only need will runes so that you don't get frozen. So just something. Like I have crit damage here just because this rune has no speed and it's good for my speed tuning, but it can be HP, it can be defense. The most important thing is having good accuracy in your team and you should be good to go. Artifact can be very helpful damage reduction against the water will be helpful as well when you're trying to make your team tankier, especially for those people who didn't want to 6-star their unit, which is understandable. You need to have better rune quality and you should be okay. But having 6-star will reduce the chance of dying to the mid-boss or the side crystal. So I focus a lot of HP and, and defense on some of these units so that they will never die accidentally to the side crystal. Especially your level 35 unit, the side crystal doesn't have an element, which means you need to be tanky. And uh, the level 35 Malaya that you are trying to use might die, so you want to have some sort of, wow, my, I have no HP in defense. But the good thing is I have Lucian at one shot wave, so I don't really care too much about the side crystal. <laughs> but yes, having double whale will allow you to not get frozen, because right here, you see this? I might not land the dots. Okay, I land the dots, but there's no incinerate. So if I get frozen right here, it can get really, really tricky, but the boss should die. Okay, the boss didn't die. That is very annoying, but it can get really tricky. Also here, because you might not kill the golem and they will start freezing your ass as well, which is really, really scary, but we should be okay here. Having a Lucian like a one-shot wave is kind of a high rune quality. Kinda. I'm not, I'm not sure about rune quality nowadays because farming is so much easier. Can you make a Lucian a one-shot wave that easily? I have no idea. <laughs> but having a Lucian a one-shot wave can really, really help. So a lot of people wonder, what if you only have one Malaya? So there are many other units that can put dots. You can try that out. But of course, it is not going to be as good. So how do you find out what can replace that Malaya? You go here. You go to the continuous damage section and try to find something that put continuous damage like consistently. Like this guy can put dots or let's say this guy can put more dots. So there are many other units that you may want to give it a try to give more dots to the boss. I think this guy can put more dots too. Dots here and dots here. So you don't have the second Malaya. Then you may have to venture into these options and you just wait for the 4 star event or save up wind scroll or save up summoning stone to try to get this unit because it is still one of the best thanks to the passive that put out dots it is still really really good but there are definitely some option out there that will allow you to put some dots on the enemy i think this guy has continuous damage everywhere as well yes a lot of other unit can put continuous damage but it's just this is still one of the best what if you don't have a lucian so I've heard about using Verd instead of Lucian. 
okay? So if you put a vert here, the crystal will be focused immediately by the vert. You can use your Tricaru vert. You might be wondering, what the hell are you talking about, Sean? Why vert in Giants B12? But the vert can help you to focus the crystal quicker, and that will help a lot in terms of consistency. Of course, the run will not be very fast because you're using a vert in Giants, and the vert doesn't kill the trash wave immediately, but it will help out with the run being more consistent. But that's about it for me, guys. I really enjoy using this team. I hope that I built it way, way earlier, like way earlier, because it's just, it is so good. But I haven't gotten anything. But I noticed, I think after I build this team, I haven't gotten a single good rune for some reason. Yeah, I've been farming a lot more, but I haven't kept anything. Like, I haven't gotten a single despair upgrade. <laughs> that is so sad. So right now I have four units of despair rune that I use a lot. Chang Peng is one of them. Two AOE skill, very good despair rune. Multi skill three is really good for despair. It doesn't increase your chance to despair, but it increases your chance for the despair to happen. Shit, doesn't that make sense? Because when you hit three times, there'll be a very good chance one of the hit would not glance, and that hit can despair stun. But compared to Savannah, it will only hit the enemy one tap, which means if it glances, it will not despair stun. So it doesn't increase the chance to despair, but it increases the chance for despair to happen. I have no idea how to say that, but I think you know what I'm talking about. So you need like Juno, who can multi-hit, is really good with despair rune. Similar to this guy who has multi-hit in skill 3, he can potentially despair stun a wind unit very very well. And Poseidon is really good with his spare room because his skill 3 is not even going to glance. So it's just amazing. And 2 AoE skill. Heigang is really good with his spare room because if you put him on any other set, he has very low impact after turn 1. But my Heigang despair stun has been life saving. And also because the spare room doesn't lose the proc value after you proc the first despair stun. For Vio, you lose the chance to proc after your first proc. But, you know, sometimes you're lucky and you proc a lot, or sometimes the enemy is lucky, they proc a lot even at 12%. But the spare doesn't lose the proc chance after you proc the spare stun. And the spare stun means enemy will not move, enemy will not get cooldown reduction. And when you push back attack bar with the spare stun, you are technically CCing them for two turns. Which is really, really good because they have to take a natural turn to get out of despair and then they have to start at zero attack bar again. So they're not moving. And with slow debuff and stun and pushback that happened from Poseidon, it is one of the best thing ever. So in the previous season, my team is always mixed with some sort of despair stun. And when you proc despair stun, it really surprised the enemy because most of the time, you expect enemy to be on some sort of vile runes. And when you proc despair stun, they're just kind of shocked and I love it so much when, you know, people throw head when they see me despair stun. And of course, I need better swift rune for my Gianna. If I run a broken set, I will have 210 speed. But if I run a wheel set here, then I will have 204 bonus speed, which is not very amazing. But if I can get, let's say, a different rune here that is not currently on my other unit because I want other unit to be fast as well, and I can use this other wheel runes here, for example, to improve my speed. So I want to have more swift rune depth so I can build more swift unit and also the spare unit. Average clear time is 37 seconds and I love this thing so much. All right, guys, that's my update for my new Giants B12 team. It's not a new team, but it's new for me. And I just want to share with you guys my rune and some of the stuff that I think while I build a team. And I hope that was helpful to you guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.